Hello students and welcome guests. I first want to begin by thanking my Patreon supporters for helping me out. Every time that you guys donate even $3 each per month, it helps a lot to support this channel. The reason that that's important is because unlike other channels, I cannot get this channel monetized all the time. If I'm showing what's happening in World War II and I am comparing it and showing what happens to the animals, the meat, dairy and egg industries of course want to pull their advertisements. But it is absolutely critical that we show what really goes on. And so that's what I'm going to continue to do. So thank you again for your support. We're going to be listening now to uh, a Holocaust survivor who is now a vegan animal rights activist. His name is Alex Hershaft. When I first saw the slaughterhouse, yeah, I saw all those body parts and it just brought back uh, memories. Based on your experiences, why did you then choose to become a, an animal advocate rather than the human rights advocate? I think that the oppression of animals is the gateway drug to oppressing humans. <clears throat> because when a child is first told that the dog on his sofa is to be loved and cherished, whereas uh, the pig on his plate is to be abused, killed, dismembered and eaten for food, uh, that's the first time that we instill the notion in, in, in a child's mind that it is okay to discriminate between two living beings that uh, basically look and seem alike. Speciesism is the first form of discrimination that children learn, the first form of racism, the purest form. Which is uh, the the basis of all forms of oppression is that uh, you're basically telling one living being that he can live and another that he must die. Uh, living beings who look basically the same. Obviously as time passes there are less and less people with direct experience of the, the Nazi-led Holocaust. Can you describe in its rawest terms what it is like having your human rights removed and being treated like nothing. Yeah, it's kind of hard to describe, but it really, you're, you're, it's probably as close as you get to identifying with what an animal goes through on a factory farm. What's so similar about it? Sure, a lot of similarities between the way the Nazis were killing <coughs> our um, people and the way that we kill animals. Uh, for one thing, uh, the identification of the victims by tattooing or branding their skin. For uh, another was the use of cattle cars to transport our people to the gas chambers. Uh, the crowded housing in wood crates. Uh, the deception and uh, hiding of the crime behind slaughterhouse walls or death camp walls. So what do you say to the people that are offended by that comparison? Right, so we're not comparing victims here. Uh, obviously, because I'm a Jew, I'm much more sensitive to persecution of Jews. Because I'm a human, I'm more sensitive to uh, oppression of human beings. But because I'm also uh, concerned with the moral universe, I'm also very concerned with the oppression of all living beings, including uh, sentient animals. How did you step out of your own experiences to, to empathize and relate to others rather than sort of staying in the, in the mindset and the mind frame of being a victim? Right, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, being a victim and identifying yourself as a victim is very destructive in a couple of ways. It's destructive in a personal way because it keeps you from developing your human potential and it's destructive in a social way because uh, it uh, gives you 
permission to ignore the suffering of others and perhaps even to oppress others. When looking at injustice and discrimination, is it important to, to focus on the victim or are you saying that's not very good, that's not beneficial? No, it's not beneficial at all because the victim doesn't matter. That's not, that's not going to solve oppression because the victim will never be the same. We're focusing on the victims rather than the cancer of oppression itself. And as long as we continue to focus on the victims, that will divide us and it will keep us from uniting and pursuing a common goal of eradicating all forms of oppression. It's easy now for people to, to look back at what happened in Nazi Germany and think, how on earth did that happen? Do you ever think there'll be a time when we look back in the same way at the, the horrors of, of animal agriculture and the plight of animals and the way they're treated? Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> absolutely we will. Uh, I think 50 years from now, people, our children, grandchildren will look at us and basically ask, what did you do to stop the <clears throat> abuse and slaughter of animals? You said there that, that you're confident of a vegan future in the next 50 years. But what do you think will be the main kind of driver behind that? It's the changing the food system, which is uh, has two parts to it. One is to provide an ample supply of plant-based foods that uh, mimic their animal-based counterparts. And the other is to create or foster, not create, but to foster the demand by making sure that our institutions include uh, those items on their menus. Thank you to Alex Hershaft for speaking out in defense of the victims. Thank you to everybody who's watched today. I don't have much more to add, except for just one little thing that's happened personally to me today um, to show you how strong cognitive dissonance is in our society. Our home is situated beside a bicycle path and on this bicycle path on our side of it on the fence we have placed different signs. Many of you know that I uh, find that this kind of, of image um, speaks to me. So I had these plastified in a bigger format in an eight and a half by eleven 14 rather and I have these kinds of pictures up on the side of our fence and the dog names and everything else and a woman walked by at uh, about 8 o'clock this morning and she decided to just come and randomly rip one of these down. Now why do you think that somebody would do that? This is a white woman. It's hard to tell her age. We do have cameras. We have screenshots of her. She wears a watch on her left hand she has shoes that are white on the bottom, black, and some sort of bright pink or red as well. She's overweight. She has brown hair. This woman decided that this is so offensive to her that she wants to rip this down off of our fence. We animal rights activists, animal defenders, who are speaking on behalf of the innocent victims who are being murdered. A holocaust is going on right now. I don't know if anybody knows who this woman is, but if you do, it would be very interesting to talk to her, wouldn't it? What side do you think she would have been on if she was alive during the times of Nazi Germany? What do you think she would have done? Since she finds this sign, a baby chick and a kitten, to be so offensive to her that she had to rip it down and steal it from us, and vandalize our property. What is her plan? To come back next and take down every single one of these signs? You always have a choice in this life to be on the side of those who are oppressing or those who are helping to save those who are being oppressed. You can do whatever you want. Yes, you can eat whatever you want, but you ought not eat whoever you want. Hopefully, if this message touches you and you can see that a Jewish man can see the difference between food and animals, maybe you can too. Be vegan from now on.
Thank you for supporting this channel.